Next, uh, I guess we can talk about the progression. Early game. There used to be an early game once upon a time, but now with seasonal servers, that's uh, that's changed. An experienced player can go into seasonal servers and within one day get max gear. So everyone in chat, welcome to the stream. And if you're watching this in the future, welcome to the video. So today we're going to be talking about the current state of BDO in 2021. I've done this video before last year. It's been a little over a year, so I wanted to revisit the topic. There's no clear cut answer here. Obviously, BDO is a huge game massive sandbox experience and a lot to do it's a game with a lot of freedom you can play however you want you don't have to follow a set path like you do in a traditional theme park game like world of warcraft final fantasy but there are different things that we can analyze to say how it's going so far i mean you got to split it up bdo is not a clear-cut route for every player some players like life skilling some players like grinding some players don't even do that they just live on the high seas and be a freaking pirate but it's how you play it it's how you want to play it today i'm going to talk about you know the current state depending on the different type of things for example uh, we'll talk about the player population how the early game experience is the mid game the late game uh, pvp pve and of course life skilling and professions so we'll we'll try to break it down uh depending on each separate facet so we can get a bit of a clear understanding of how things are going right now before we get started as always uh, whenever i do a critique video i like to point out the positives and things i like about the game because this is what you make of it it is your perspective some people have a good experience some people have a bad rng is rng right you know everyone's experience is different but for the most part i think we can get a a general a consensus from the broad group of players things i like about the game i mean the current state of the game uh is definitely better than it it was when it released if you guys were around when the game came out in 2016 uh it was trash <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna sugarcoat it it was terrible like i do not miss uh the old marketplace where you couldn't buy something even if you had the money you had to place your offer and it had to go through an RNG sequence where everyone's bidding on it. And then a random winner is selected. Pretty freaking toxic. But, you know, uh, that's one of the things I appreciate about the game. That, you know, despite where they started, uh, over the past uh, four plus years, they, they've been slowly improving the game. Like, it's been consistently getting better and better and better. And that's a really good sign. Companies need to remember this have a good product if you have a good product the players will come if the players come you'll get the money you don't need it to be insanely pay to win um, one of my critique about bdo is the cash out is pretty expensive is what it is right but let's start off with some of the pros i guess uh whenever anyone hears about bdo whenever they hear the name black desert online they think about the combat the combat is top tier it's not the most fluid of combat in the sense that it's slit body your character can move around while using its skills it's locked in mode in root motion so whenever you use a skill you're locked in that animation until the animation is complete there are some animation cancels depending on the skill and the class but the reason why it works so well with bdo is a few things one the game looks phenomenal it looks gorgeous like the animations uh as well as the skill effects the visual effects they look top tier on top of that they have a system called flows so some skills flow into other skills uh, very smoothly the audio visual feedback top tier the quality of the effects absolutely great i mean there's nothing bad i can really say about the combat i that's the reason i play <laughs> next i'd like to say the graphics in this game it's like no other i mean no other game came back and did a full-fledged remaster and made it look as good as it is right now in terms of the uh, rest of the game like the scenery the classes the uh, environment everything just looks so good i mean there's no game that looks as nice as bdo there, there's a reason why bdo is one of the top games when you have when you have good gameplay when you have uh good environment and visuals i mean that pretty much takes a lot of the boxes for a lot of players so next up um one thing i really appreciate about bdo is the freedom it offers uh, in black desert online it's not the traditional route of hey you gotta level to cap and then you start doing your basic dungeons and then you work your way into the early tier raids the late tier raids and the highest form of uh pve content it's not like that um you can actually do whatever the hell you want honestly there are some ways to progress which are better than others. Like starting off and going into bartering is gonna be really difficult because you need an initial capital to be able to afford your ship. For the most part, as a player, after you get through the initial learning curve, you can do whatever you want. Like if you wanna just do professions, by all means, you can sell your combat gear and do that for the rest of your days and you'll be perfectly fine. Vice versa, you can just do grinding. The freedom it gives, it's something that really resonates with me because that's what I like. I mean, I came from playing RuneScape as my first MMORPG. I liked uh, being able to do whatever I want. That's what MMORPGs are about. It's something unique to a sandbox game that not many 
uh, other games can replicate as well. I know there are other sandbox games which do it great, but you know, BDO is the best. <laughs> Development team for BDO is also one of the pros of the game. How many times did they release a quality of life update, which none of us thought we needed, but they did it anyway. I'm like, yeah, that's great. That's freaking great. Improving the game from what it is right now, like, you know, over the course of a year, like the game's changed a lot. I was looking at some of my old videos from just like a year, three months ago, completely different. Like I made a video saying, oh, I can make 50 mil a day, a hundred mil a day. Now people are grinding like three, 400 mil an hour. So it's like, yo, the game's devolved considerably since then. Pearl Abyss is a very professional and top tier company in that regards. They have multiple products and they're trying to improve them, not just uh, try to, you know, put on life support and work on something new. No, they're actively improving what they have along with working with uh, new projects on the side. It's a solid development team. I'm, I'm sure we'll see this game around. Uh, in a pretty sizable state even five years down the line so I have no doubts about that anyway those are the pros of about BDO that I like some of the things that they do really well now I guess we can uh, start digging into the individual topics a bit more first thing I want to talk about is the player population one of the biggest MMORPGs out there right now when BDO came out it came out to a pretty decent reception but one thing I noticed is that they grew pretty well there was a period where the numbers actually dipped a little bit, but for the most part, they've always been in the upward trajectory. Whenever there's huge events coming through, you'll see new influx of players. And now they've really uh, capitalized on that with the seasonal servers for the past year. And now they just revamped the entire season server process and released season plus, which is even easier and brought even more people back into the game, which is a, which is a good thing. For the most part, it's one of those things that I think was a big player in keeping the player base healthy. Uh, having a player population numbers is really important for an MMORPG, obviously. Uh, there's always going to be people quitting. There's always going to be people joining in. You just have to make sure the number of people quitting is not more than the number of new players joining in and retaining them. So player population, however, is like one of those things that, you know, most MMORPGs, whenever they go to Steam, they go there to die. Like no MMORPG went there to make a rebound. Usually when they're losing players, that's when they move to Steam and then, you know, sustain it for a bit longer, maybe another year, and then they close the doors. But Video went there when the servers were pretty packed. Like back then we had a lot of servers which were like pretty crowded and then they went into Steam and they're like, yo, give us more players. So they've always been good on it. Um, over time, they did a dip in the numbers from what I could see. But, you know, that's just a normal fluctuation you see for any game. A lot of games actually are pretty seasonal in that regards. When it's summer or winter breaks coming up, uh, player population usually goes up. But overall, healthy player population and with the increase of group content, I think they're on the right track. Next, uh, I guess we can talk about the progression. Early game. There used to be an early game once upon a time, but now with seasonal servers, that's uh, that's changed. Uh, you get fast tracked into mid game content, which is OK. I think it's still considered early game in my books An experienced player can go into seasonal servers and within one day get max gear and um you know just breeze right through where if you're a new player who never played bdo before you can uh, go into seasonals and uh learn the game learn get past that initial learning curve you know take a few weeks take a month or two eventually get to the end game of seasonal with full pen to gear which is a seasonal server gear and then you can uh, transition into the normal game overall i think the early game experience is better than what it was because previously it was a very brutal learning curve i mean this game has a lot of depth to it in different regards. Now with the Seasonal Plus servers, uh, they really streamlined the experience of the initial quest. And you don't have to go through the initial uh, story quest line if you've done it once. So like if you're going back uh, on a new seasonal character, you can skip that. So overall, I mean, like now that it's fast tracked to the extent it has been, it gets you into the game, but it really doesn't teach you too much about the rest of the game because seasonal servers are very oriented around grinding. But then life skilling is a whole nother department where there's a whole learning curve. Honestly, the only way you can learn that is through your friend, your guild, or content online. There's plenty of content and guides on YouTube and Google, so there's not a lack of information. So it's pretty much just uh, looking up things and learning it. So in terms of the new player experience, the current state, it's improved. I still wish that they would add some life skilling stuff for seasonal uh, servers. Like, I don't see anything wrong with doing that. I really don't see any harm in like letting players get to like 1k mastery uh, that's not really like groundbreaking uh it's not until like uh, much higher mastery that you're making the big bucks so i really hope that they'd consider putting in uh, a life skill progression system into uh seasonals 
I don't know how you guys feel about it. Let me know in the comments or in chat right now, but I think that's one thing that would be an improvement. Next up, once you reach the, the threshold of full Pentavala, I guess you can firmly say you're done with the early game and you're entering the mid game side of things. So it's hard to define this game as mid game and late game. Um, the reason I'm using that terminology is because it's a long progression, like to get to end game gear, it's going to take over a year. You have to play this game like a part time job in order to get to that level or get RNG carried. I mean, either or. But unless you're putting in like four plus hours a day making money, uh, it's going to take a considerable amount of time to get there. This isn't a game where sheer skill alone can uh, topple someone. Like if you're like 273 AP, 329 DP, that's like uh, where you start getting into the really good end game spots, in my opinion, right as it starts. But if you have that and you're facing off against someone with like 50 plus more more gear score they're gonna get stomped and they can stand still and you'll still not be able to kill them i mean that's just the way the game is designed hopefully uh the progression does get updated in the future i'm looking to see if they can uh update the actual mechanics behind the progression like the enhancement system sucks no one says it's good very few people enjoy it i actually recently made a video on why players quit video in the comments i asked people to tell me their story why did they quit or why are they considering quitting? And people were typing paragraphs of why they quit and telling their side of the story. And I really appreciate everyone who commented there and you know let us know because I was able to pass on that feedback. But you know, a lot of the recurring thing was the RNG is just trash. In my opinion, I, I, I really hope that they can look into it and fix it because it sucks. So let's say that you did uh, go through seasonal servers. You got to um, the end game for Tuval, that's like what, 250 AP, 311 DP if you do all the journals, something like that. So once you get out that initial stage and you're in the mid game, you can start making money, decent money, like, you know, depending on if you, what kind of loot scrolls you use, if you're using your Agris buff, you can make like over 300 million an hour, just can't sustain it. But now you're getting to the point where you start, um, you know, working towards full pen gear. Full pen, uh, is not a difficult task, but it's just, it's just a matter of time. Uh, this isn't a difficult progression game it's just all about how much money you can make per hour and how many hours you're willing to spend so you could be making 300 mil an hour which is good money you can make four four five hundred mil an hour which is excellent top tier but then in the grand scheme of things you need hundreds of bills <laughs> to get to max gear so that's a lot of freaking hours and it's just a matter of are you willing to spend it do you have the time are you a casual player who only has one to two hours a day to play then you can still play bdo but then you probably want to consider uh you know just taking it casually and you know enjoying the ride as they say but if you want to get to the end game you have to your shit out of luck i'm sorry unless you want to go full pay to win which is ridiculously expensive there's not much you can do to get to end game uh two to three hours a day is like a bare minimum but if you only have like one to two hours you're not going far unfortunately that's just how the game is designed i mean the more time you spend the more you get you get back for it so anyway once you're at the mid game you can start making decent money and you start working towards your pen gears and i would consider late game to be like high 600s like you know 650 plus i guess and then all the way till 700 something it's just a linear grind you're just making money and putting into your gear cafres and whatnot getting your pen accessories pen black stars there's not really much differentiation on what you're doing you're still grinding i mean you're pretty much playing the game the same way that you've been playing it until then it's just uh the numbers change you got more gear score you're at different spots and you're making more money and it's just rinse and repeat. I really need them to add a new avenue of like progression. Uh, not dailies, f dailies. I, I don't think that's content. You can do so much better than putting up dailies. Come on, think harder. But is what it is. Uh, progression, I feel like it's at a decent state. It's better than what it was, but it's still, it's still a lot of time. It's not worth the investment in my opinion. Getting to mid game. You know, getting to like that early 600 gear score to 650, that's like decently easy. It's not too bad. It's just a matter of spending time. But then progressing further, it just takes more and more time. Now, end game, once you're there, it's like uh, full calf red gear and full pens, pen accessories and everything. At that point, that's when you can start PVPing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm memeing a bit there. I mean, you don't need to get that much gear score to be able to be competent in PvP, but uh, if you're a 650 gear score, even if you're a rock star of a player, absolutely skilled, uh, top tier in that regards, you'll still get stopped by certain classes which have just too much gear where you can't kill them in a combo, but they can, or they can even one-shot you in some, in some cases. So in terms of the end game, 
Um, you still do the same things. You just can. You, you're just not at that disadvantage of being uh, uh, destroyed in PvP as you would be if you're a 50 to 60 gear score less or 100 gear score less. Uh, but it's still not balanced at the end game. There are still some uh, issues where you know certain classes are near unkillable in certain builds where others are getting one banged even with like 380 dp or something so um the balance isn't perfect but you're at least not disadvantaged that i guess that's the advantage of getting to end game <laughs> uh, that's just me being a bit salty in that regards because the amount of time it takes is like me being a content creator building up a youtube channel it was done through sheer analytics and just trial and error and you know just practice i mean just keep releasing videos improving your content to a point where it, you know people enjoy watching it i was able to do that in a lot less time than it would take to get to 700 gear score so when you see the value of what you can do in that time it's just not it's not even a matter of playing games for enjoyment i mean how many people are actually enjoying the grind of like hundreds of hours like very few some people will say that just to spite me but i highly doubt you're sitting there and be like oh my god this is so much fun no i really hope the progression is improved so if anyone's thinking about like should you get to end game like like start grinding for it if you're having fun do what you're doing but don't uh double down and start grinding eight hours a day it's not worth it moving on pvp pvp sucks <laughs> look i'm just being salty here but in reality there are some actual issues uh, with the game in regards to PvP. Um, the combat is great, it's phenomenal, and it's really fun to PvP against like your friends, your guildies, and people in the same gear score as you. It, it can actually be really fun and exhilarating. Uh, getting into those small scale skirmishes or your first uh, few node wars and stuff, like it's fun, it's fun. Um, there are some issues with the game at, at its core. This is a game with a high, it's like a fast paced game, high mobility, uh, high APM, and you're putting in a lot of inputs and some classes are more mechanically gifted than others. Like some have a lot more iframes and protections. Some don't have grabs. Some have more CCs in general. Some have everything. So there is a huge disparity in certain classes versus some of the gifted classes. On top of that, this game started development a long time ago. It's not the latest and greatest uh, backend architecture, right? So we have a lot of desync issues. Sometimes you won't feel it if uh, both players have good ping, but uh, if there's any difference there, um, that can act up. And especially if you're fighting against a high mobility class, which is like half of them now, like these faster paced classes, they tend to desync more because quicker inputs, quicker uh, uh, skills going off uh, and the server not uh, keeping it in sync with your client versus what it is in the server. The server says, no, this dude is over there on your client. You grabbed him but then they suddenly blink over there. So that's pretty much desync in a nutshell. But unfortunately, you know, class imbalance, that is one thing that in my opinion, it should be like pretty basic. Like if one class is able to grab, it has iframes, it has protected large scale AOE skills, which do huge amounts of damage. On top of that, uh, it's just scales really well, both early game and end game. Like there's a lot of things that go into a class being good and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that a class is really really fucking strong but regardless some classes are absolutely cocked like it's terrible meanwhile you have uh musa and mewa they've been struggling for years not even like a few months not even a uh for a little while no they've been struggling for literally years meanwhile there's these new classes getting everything like the last four new classes they put out they have ranged grabs. Ash's grab is, has a pretty decent range on it compared to like, you know, a mystic, right? You know, Nova has a pretty long range on hers. Sage has a pretty long range on her on his. Corsairs is a pretty long range grab. I'm like, you're literally giving these classes a ranged grab. Meanwhile, you have a Musa. Musa is a class which is very mobile. Once upon a time, he was a, a really good class uh, back in the old style of the game when uh, you're one-shotting mobs and that's, your end game grinding now you have to use your full combo to take out these end game mobs at the best spots um he really fell behind after the game transitioned to this new the new state it's in right now and in pvp back in the old days he used to be able to hold it, hold his own because you know there are classes which were a bit more gifted but it wasn't so bad that he was completely outmatched right now since they musa and maywa do, they don't have grabs they have to capitalize on gaps and super armors and be you know pretty careful compared to other classes whereas a mystic like in succession mystic i can literally fight a musa and maywa 
stay in super armor 24 7 and out dps them that's that's pretty much their situation <laughs> now finally they started doing the uh rework right they started doing the revamp for the first original 17 classes and hopefully from the looks of it they've been doing a pretty good job with it i'm actually pleased with the kind of things they've been updating in these classes things that i didn't even think about so uh, that's a good sign so hopefully they'll fix it but yo for the past uh x amount of years they've been uh doing this kind of shenanigans so enough said so pvp as a whole there's really not much content behind it there is node wars and sieges i guess that's the premier content of the game uh, after that there is red battlefield which is terrible uh certain classes are grossly at an advantage like casters for example that's witch wizard and uh sages they have huge aoe's they're very mobile and they can stand on top of like a like witch and wizard they'll stand on the highest point on some building and then drop a meteor and they're like oh we're so skilled yes i'm pvping and then when they lost the protection on that one skill which does like a fuck ton of damage and ccs you they're like oh who are they nerfed our class i'm like that's not a nerf bro <laughs> that's just a minor tweak you're still one banging the dude and who's like a mile away and his entire party so the, the pvp updates the balances have been really slow like there's some things that uh really need to be fixed but to their credit they do look at it but they look at it from a statistical point of view they look at the um amount of damage x amount of classes are doing in respect to um rbf and such compared to other classes they're looking at how many uh, which classes are getting the kills or uh, which classes are getting less kills and they look at statistics but that's not everything right i mean it, that's one part of it but you know they, you got to do more than that anyway that's just the nature of uh the game in terms of open world pvp eh, i hate open world pvp it's mostly griefing um the most common thing is duel for spot when you're grinding at a uh, spot you're just you know minding your own business killing mobs trying to make some money if someone wants your spot they come up to you and they're like duel for spot and then you'll you'd be like yes or no you can fight them and uh make them go away or you can do the same thing you can roll up on somebody's spot and say hey let's duel let's throw down and if you win you take it uh if if they lose, um, they have to leave or stand there and grief you. <laughs> but griefing goes both ways. Uh, every time I say no, I don't want to duel for spot. No one really left. Everyone just flags up and forces me to fight. And usually 99% of the time is someone with a lot more gear than me. Uh, the argument against like some of the mechanics they were trying to add uh, for like the bounty system was that, oh, now I can't uh, protect my grind spot. I rarely ever have to protect my grind spot. It's always higher gear player coming in um, and saying, hey, let's duel for spot. Uh, I rarely ever. There's only been a handful of instances when someone actually came into my spot and started grinding me or grinding the mobs and ignored me the entire time. Very few times that ever happened. It's always someone with more gear trying to take my spot. It's never to protect their spots. Unfortunately, PvP in open world is not that great. Guild Wars can be fun. I must say the salt that goes on between some guilds where now they're they're not just fighting over a spot or to grief they're actually fighting for prestige where you know there's a score between each guild uh, during their guild war and you're trying to you know beat the other one i guess uh, there's some fun that can be had there but <laughs> for the most part uh, open world pvp is pretty shitty on top of that people try to get you killed to mobs to make your crystals break if you you know if you don't leave your grind spot, if they win the duel or whatever, those kind of shenanigans. And that's uh, unfortunately completely okay in the books of the GMs. Um, I have uh, confirmed with them that, you know, they're completely okay with that. So when uh, griefing is promoted in that regards, it's pretty shit experience. So in terms of open world PvP, in terms of PvP in general, it has a lot of potential. I do like that they've been doing tournaments and stuff. That's been great, um, you know, to showcase the game as well as let people are really invested in the game and uh, really uh, practice hard to get good at the game to showcase their skills. They did um, best in class tournaments, uh, trial character tournaments where everyone's on equalized gear. They've done uh, Tavala tournaments. Well, uh, for that, in that regard, in, in terms of doing that kind of stuff, it's really good for the community. It's something to entertain with. Uh, you, you can see some really sick plays. Like some of the fights were insane. I really like that they're doing it and I hope that they continue to do it. Um, in terms of uh, new content coming for PvP, we are waiting for those arenas. Uh, they did say they were going to work on it, but right now they're completely focused on their class rework. So I don't think they'll be releasing that anytime soon, but you know, sometime early 2022 maybe. But open world PvP, shit.
Node Wars and Sieges, if you enjoy it, it can be fun, but I know that there are some performance issues and there are some other issues with Node Wars and stuff where, you know, really powerful guilds are competing in lower tier Node Wars just for shits and giggles and to have fun. I mean, no, no hate on them. I mean, you got to play the game how you enjoy it, right? All right. Last but not least, uh, I want to talk about the PvE in this game. Yeah grind that's about it okay there's a bit more than just grinding grinding is the primary form of pve there are world bosses which are really lackluster now um they did revamp some of them and uh, release higher forms of them like you know stormbringer karanda or nightmare zarka it's just a matter of them one-shotting us uh, they still die the same it's still a clusterfuck of everyone just smashing the boss and it dies eventually um, no real mechanics, dodge the red, you're good. It's pretty basic in terms of world bosses, that's not really much of a content anymore. Like, even the two top bosses, like Vel and Garmoth, thing's gonna die in a few minutes, you just have to hit it a few times and chill in the back. Uh, there's so many players hitting it, that it's gonna die. I guess, uh, grinding is it's the most common PvE content in this game, which is pretty lackluster, I mean, after, it's not really a matter of what you're grinding, rather, what you're grinding on. Uh, your class plays a bigger factor. I mean, of course, the grind location also plays a factor. Like, for example, on a striker, there's some spot that I enjoy grinding on, uh, other spots I don't like grinding on. Whereas a, with a guardian, it's the complete opposite. Like, I rather grind in the spots striker is weaker at than, for example, underground underwater Sakraya. Like, Sakraya is terrible on my guardian, where striker is like top tier. So, yeah, there is a factor of that, but. I think the biggest uh, differentiator for me is a class. You got to play a class you enjoy. But luckily, there's so many classes and each class has Awakening and Succession. At least most of them do. And there's a lot to choose from. So there's a class for everybody pretty much. So that's pretty good. However, what we're doing in terms of grinding, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the same thing over and over. If you do it hundreds and hundreds of hours to get to end game, um, you will eventually get bored of it. Then you have the dungeons, which uh, they released the first dungeon. They're going to release a sequel to that, I guess, the second dungeon pretty soon. Good for them to implement it, but it was a long time coming, and I don't think it's the best execution of it. I feel like there should be a solid incentive for doing a dungeon. Like, the amount of money you make doing a dungeon with a full party of players should be a lot more than going on, going and grinding. Now, of course, if you don't want people to spam your dungeon and just make a ridiculous amount of cash, put a cooldown on it. Like, you can only make this much money once every 24 hours, once every week, and then any subsequent runs, you get less money, whatever. Overall, dungeon content, very minimum. We only have one dungeon right now. There are some group grinding spots, a lot more than there used to be a year ago. They slowly started converting old uh, solo spots into group spots, like uh, in the earlier uh, parts of the game. Like, for example, Basilisk was a low-end grind spot for you know, early game players. Now it's a group grind spot for them. So they've been doing these kind of small changes. There are some um, notable grind spots where you can grind with a group of three. It's mostly group of three or group of two, like Pandix Island and then group of three for like uh, Castle Ruins and what whatnot, but, or all ones. But there are places to grind with friends, but it's not like there's a huge incentive. You're just grinding because you want to grind there or you want a certain drop from there. For example, Olin's, you get the uh, merchant ring piece or the uh, piece of the Lara Zeka costume. Otherwise, in terms of incentive, it's not really there. I feel like, I feel like this is what needs to happen. For group grinding spots, you should be making 10 to 15% more silver than grinding solo. I think that's what needs to happen. Like that, there needs to be that incentive before you can say that there is proper group content. Because whenever you're missing out on silver per hour, that just kills the reason to go grind. Why would you go do group content when you can do solo? <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, PvE, eh, it's okay. <laughs> so, all in all, the current state of BDO, I'd say it's a pretty positive one because what I like to look at is where it was a year ago and where it is now. In regards to pretty much everything, it's improved. I'm sure the main complaint from my viewership is going to be like, wait, you said everything, but life skilling wasn't buffed yet. I'm like, oh, they're still making like two to three billion a day. So, you know, that can wait a little bit. <laughs> But I'm sure we'll see some more changes that are outside of the combat sphere of things after the reworks are done. But for now, I think it's been a pretty positive change from what it was a year ago. Even after they released uh, seasonal servers, they continued to improve that. I really wish they continued to improve it in a different direction as well, add life skills in there. But overall, it's been a pretty good change uh, for the community. 
They've improved old grind spots. They brought in Elvia servers this year, which uh, revitalized some older spots, which we never visited or used. They've improved the Valencia spots. They buffed those areas. So it's actually worth grinding there now. So all in all, a lot of positive changes came through. And yeah, I guess class balance is an issue, but they are working on it. The reworks are looking pretty solid right now. And, you know, let's wait and see how that turns out. But overall, depends on how you look at it. It's your perspective. It's uh, what you feel about the game or how you feel about it, how much time you have on your hands, how much you're willing to spend. And overall, it's different for everybody, but it's definitely a game worth uh, experiencing if you're a new player looking to get into the game. And if you're an old player trying to return, um, it's improved some in some ways where it's easier to progress. So probably a good thing to revisit, uh, especially after they do the reworks for the classes. So yeah, keep it in mind. Anyway, that's it for me in terms of the current state of BDO. That is, uh, it is what it is. This is one man's opinion. I'm sure some people are thinking the exact opposite of what I said or, or disagree with everything. If you do, let me know in the comments uh, down below. All good. <laughs> no hard feelings there if you want to eviscerate every point I said, but it's what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks.